Have you ever wondered how you create such a lovely sky, such a beautiful glow? Well, I'm going to go through this tutorial with you now, step by step. It's perfect for a beginner. We've got a beautiful beginner's flower field today, a lovely landscape scene. The first thing that I'm doing is coming on, and I've done a few of these already, with a cotton bud and a bit of masking fluid, and I'm dabbing varying the pressure just to create some bits where these lighter flowers will be. They're a bit bigger at the front, a bit more dottier at the back. And then this sort of top section I'm going to leave because I'm going to just do that with paint. So I've got my colour squirted out. I'm going to come straight in with some water. I'm going to get a nice sky in. I'm going to come all the way down with the water to the hillside. So I'm coming over that first line of trees. It's quite a simple drawing. Just got a couple of lines of where the trees are really. I'm going to pick up around number 10. I'm going to dip into some cobalt blue and wisp that in. So I'm using a Saunders Waterford paper, loading my brush up with water, dabbing in to the paint and just wisping through with a circular motion to get that sort of cloudy effect. Load my brush up with water, dip in. You can come over the tree line, that's absolutely fine. And you get a really nice summer sky. If I take a little bit of water and a bit of the cobalt blue, so a couple of dabs of that and a tiny bit of some burnt sienna, just take that in, I'm going to make a bluey grey. So this is my bluey grey. So I'm going to bring this into the sky as well. So just a few dabs. This is still with my round number 10. I get a variety of tone happening here. We'll swap down to round number six and I've got some sap green. I'm going to take a dab of that sap green. It's not a lot of water on my brush and a dab of the burnt sienna. And I'm just going to make that sap green a little bit duller. I don't want it to be too bright on that horizon. And then whilst this is still damp, I'm going to come in and create this tree line. If I want a variety of tone in my trees, if I take a little dab of blue into some of the green, it'll give me a different tone. And because it's wet, it'll just spread out at the top and look all nice and tree-like. It's a great way of doing distant trees with nice thick paint. So I've got some that are a bit greener, some that are a bit bluer. I dab back into that bit of green. I'm just going to work my way all the way along and let it blend. If it shoots too far, it's usually the paper's either a little bit too wet and you need to wait a bit longer for the sheen to go off or your paint's a bit too fluid. You want nice thick paint. This is nice thick paint. Hardly any water in it. I'm 
and I'm just really mixing these greens to just get a variety of tones. I don't want it all to be one green. So I've dabbed a little bit of blue in, in places. I want a variety of heights. Okay, I'll dry that one off. Okay, so that's nicely dry now. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of water. Okay, so that's nicely dry now. I'm going to come in with a little bit of water on this field section and come over those trees that are at the bottom. We're going to do a similar process. I'm doing this from round number 10 to what I did last time. So I'm going to have loaded my brush up with water. I've dipped into this vibrant sap green and it is vibrant. I'm going to bring that across. The whole of that field so where it's all wet and where the trees are going to go. I'm going to bring that across. Horizontal gives a nice feeling of surface. Then I'm going to swap down to around number six and I'm going to pick up some of the cobalt blue. So my brush is quite loaded with water and I just want to make sure that I've got a variety of tone in the field. So I'm going to sweep some in and across and that's going to create a little bit of shadow. Like that. If I take a nice big dip of that sap green and a nice big dip of that burnt sienna and a dip of cobalt blue. I'm looking for a darker green, a darker natural green. So the brown always makes it look more natural. Now I'm going to start to come in and create some more trees. So it's the same process that we've just done, except we're now doing it on the front of the field. So we want these to be bigger than the ones in the background. And you're just dabbing and moving this across. So I'm going to start with one tone and then I'm going to add in another tone. Variety of heights again. You can be true to the picture or you can use a little bit of artistic license. And that way you can change the heights a little bit more. Everything looks more natural if it's non-uniform. I'm going to take a dab of the blue in one side, a dab of the green in the other side. Then I'm going to pick up a flat brush I'm going to dab in to each of those and just add a little bit of texture You can dab in one side the green, one side the blue and then you're going to keep upright and keep dabbing So I need a bit more of neat paint So I'm going to dab into the green dab into the blue and then I'm twisting as I'm dabbing it's just I want to get a little bit more tone into some of these so dab into the blue dab into the green if you're dabbing half and half you get a lot more variety it's good to do with a flat brush because you do get that variety a bit easier when you're learning You don't have to do it everywhere. Dab of the green, dab of the blue. We just want a difference of tone in some places. It's going to make it look more natural. 
If, as a rule of thumb, I tend to say if you keep your darker colours towards the bottom, that tends to work better. That's looking lovely. So I'll dry that one off. Okay, so that's dried nicely. We're going to get a base on this bottom section now. So that masking fluid has preserved the white of the paper by drying and creating a barrier. And we're going to rub that off later. If you haven't got masking fluid, you could do it without and just dot in some of the light cerulean blue that I'm going to use. So you want plenty of water on this section. I've got a round number 10. And then I have got some cerulean blue. So this is cerulean blue. I've loaded my brush up with water. I'm going to start to bring this in first. We're going to capture the blue of the flowers. Horizontal motion. And we're not going to get all the blue in at this stage, so we're going to come back in later and sponge in a little bit more blue. Just move this slightly out of the way. We can see here that where the masking fluid's taken on the paper. So I'm concentrating on this back section at this stage. I've also got something called dioxazine violet or Windsor violet. It's very, very strong, so you need to make sure you've got plenty of water on your brush. And I just want you to sweep a little bit of that through. Just randomly, horizontally, and it's just creating, again, that shadowed feel. I'm going to load my brush up with some sap green, water, dip into sap green. So I've changed stroke now, I'm going sort of a grassy vertical stroke so I start to build up this so I always draw with the paint and you're coming all the way up to this blue Then I'm going to dab into the cobalt blue and just take some sap green and cobalt blue mixed so you get a slightly darker green and just sweep some of that through. I don't want to blend it too much, I want it to blend on the paper itself. So we're just getting that really nice movement in there. Some lovely vertical strokes. Take a little bit, just horizontally through here, just start to break up that little line of blue and, and green just by blending through. So you basically want to create a gradual sort of phased out feel. So to do that, you just blend a little bit through just in places. Okay, I'll dry that one off. Okay, so this is looking really lovely now. Um, a few more bits to do now. We're going to work with a bit of natural sponge, the bobbly bits of a natural sponge. If you haven't got that, you can do it with some brushwork. Okay, so I'm going to take some of this sap green into some of the cobalt blues. So I want that darker bluey green. I'm just going to add a little bit more water to it. This is just using my round number 10. I'm just going to take some of this. I don't want it to be too much darker. A tiny bit of the burnt sienna. That's good. Okay, so I've wet the sponge, I've wrung it out, I've dabbed it off to take off excess moisture. I'm going to take up some of this paint so you can see here that the sponge has got some green in and then I'm going to sweep 
upwards. So I'm dragging, dragging the sponge. You need to make sure you don't get it too wet, otherwise it'll all turn into one blob. But it's a really quick and effective way to start to create that sort of grassy feel. You could do this with a fan brush, if you had a fan brush. It's a similar sort of effect. I find that the sponge is a little bit more natural than the fan brush. You tend to use a lot of paint when you're sponging. And then I'm just going to dab through. So just with the final bits of the green, I'm just going to break up with a little bit of dabbing. You've got a bit of both texture then. Okay, and then if I rinse that out, dab it off again. I'm going to do the same with some cerulean blue. So I picked it up, look, I'm going to dab in. So I'm dabbing into this green section, so I'm creating that blend. As I dab, I come into the air, I twist a little bit, so I get a variety of marks. I'm not just getting one same pattern. And I'm going to bring that dabbing back lightly all the way over that blue section. If I take a little bit of that Windsor Violet or Dioxazin Violet if you're using student quality in there I'm just going to dab a little bit of that through as well. That just creates a little bit of shadow in there. I took that little bit of a mix into what was left of the cerulean blue so it wasn't too strong. You don't need to go everywhere. Take a little bit through here as well. All added texture. Okay, I'll dry that one off. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is come in with a bit of neat cerulean blue. Now, this may sound strange, but it just will give a bit of oomph. It's a bit pale at the minute, and I just want to give it a little bit of oomph. Just in a couple of places. I haven't got a lot on the sponge. It's only really on a corner of the sponge. I'm just dabbing that through in a similar process just so that I'm getting that bit of boldness. It's between where the masking fluid flowers are and the distance. I don't want to go too far back because I don't want that to be too bold. But I do want a bit more warmth in this foreground section. So because it's dry, it's giving it an extra layer and that's going to give it a bit of boldness and then I'll dry off again okay so when it's totally dry and by totally dry I mean warm to the touch what you're going to do is rub that masking fluid off and you can use do that by just rubbing with your fingers left to right and it will all come off with the um, using the cotton bud, the earbud, you do find that you get odd bits that are left without masking fluid that go a bit darker and that works really well. It's nice and random. You can see where I've varied and put some close together and some further apart so it just works really nicely for wildflowers and it's not ruining your brushes because masking fluid will ruin your brushes. Okay so I've got number six and some cerulean blue 
and we can basically just start to fill some of these in. So in this bigger area, where they're a bit bigger, I'm just going to come in with the number 6 and dot the colour in really. doesn't matter if you go over a little bit into the green, it will look like it's part of a shadowed flower. It doesn't matter if you leave a tiny bit of white, that will just look like a highlight. I'm basically colouring in these flowers. It's a nice simple process. So for these bottom ones, do it this way and then you can, as you come further back, just use the sponge and I'm going to show you that in a second. It's just because I want these ones to be quite clean at the front. Because they're within the green, I don't want too much of the blue to go in there. Okay, and if I take a little bit of water into that mix, you can do the same and use the sponge so it's clean. I've wrung it out, I've dabbed it off, and I can come through and colour in quite easily with the sponge because it's within a blue area anyway. These ones look a lot lighter than the ones at the front. Again, that will work from a sense of distance perspective really nicely. Okay, I'm just going to dry that off. Okay, so that's dried now. Um, you can add a few little extra grasses. So this is with my sap green and a little bit of burnt sienna but just be careful you don't end up too too precise you want it to feel quite loose still so this round number six and I'm just stroking in a few extra strokes just at the bottom for a bit of definition don't want too much detail <clears throat> and then the last thing I'm going to do is just throw some splatter on so I'm going to cover up this top section load my brush up and when I say throw I'm not going to throw I'm just going to hit my finger so I've loaded the brush up I'm hitting my finger now you can see why I've covered that top section up move along because I don't want to get it into the sky and this just creates a little bit of movement a little bit more looseness but I might even use that little bit of violet that's left and add a little bit of violet as well if it does splatter high which it sometimes does it's quick to remove it or you'll have a bird in the sky just a little bit down here There. 
There we go. So here we are, it's all finished. Um, I've popped it out a mount on so you can see the full effect. It's got a really lovely glow about it and it's a very, very simple watercolour so I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to do more of my work I'll pop a playlist up here for you um, and another video that's very similar for a beginner up here.